All right, and welcome to Psyched for Careers, the career show for the University of Wisconsin Green Bay Psychology Program. I'm Ryan Martin, chair of the psychology program. And I'm Chris Vespia. I am a faculty member in the psychology program. Outstanding. Thank you. We're back. This is season three, I think, of this. Really? Yeah, season wow. three. So there's a lot of episodes for you to check out on the, uh, on the Psych Report website, mm -hmm. on the page for this. Um, so here's the thing. If you've watched previous episodes, uh, and I know you all have because you're loyal viewers, um, you know that as a, <clears throat> we, we tend to talk about kind of what you can do for a, a lot of different types of careers. In fact, mm -hmm. I think the first ever episode is, what can you do with a psych degree? And the answer is anything, right? There's lots, lots and lots of options. However, over the summer, I was talking to some students, and someone said, you know, I, I, I became a psych major because I was interested in therapy. And so I'd love it if you did an episode or you talked a little bit about, you know, what are some th some ways that uh, I can become a therapist. What are some mm -hmm. What are some options there? So, Chris, for those students who are many of our students who uh, want to do therapy, what are some of the options? Okay, this is a great question. First of all, we should probably even talk about that word therapy yes. because we have students actually who, while they're students here, are line therapists with some of the in-home um, agencies that serve people on the autism spectrum. Um, and that career is called line therapist. Um, but in fact, um, I guess there are two things to know. One is that there are lots of helping careers you can do with a bachelor's degree in psychology, and that includes line therapy. Um, it also includes working um, as um, an advocate in domestic violence mm -hmm. centers, sexual assault centers, doing crisis uh, intervention work with 24-hour crisis centers and lines. Lots and lots and lots of options, including group homes, and gosh, we'll do another episode on that. But what most of you are thinking about when you use that word therapist is you're thinking about, I want to sit in front of a client, and I want to be doing counseling or psychotherapy right. with that person. Mm -hmm. For that, you have to go to graduate school, mm -hmm. and you typically have to get either a license to practice in the state that mm -hmm. uh, you want to practice in, um, and or you get certified um, within that state. So that's a, a little bit different process. There are lots of options for getting there in terms of graduate programs. So you could get a master's degree, and you could get a master's degree in a variety of different things. If you're specifically interested in a school setting, three of the options would be um, school social work, school guidance counseling, and school psychology. Uh, this is my opportunity to put in a plug for school psychology, just so you know. They seem to be in demand right now. Um, if you're interested It's an exclusive, in, a site for careers exclusive, exclusive. right there. Breaking so news, right there. there first. Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> word of mouth. I'm passing on rumors. Oh, okay, there you perfect. Go. Uh, and so, uh, if you're interested in working in community settings, and um, again, you want a master's degree, social work, counseling, um, potentially marriage and family therapy, and then if you want a, a PhD, if you want to be a psychologist, then um, clinical or counseling psychology are the two dominant. You can get a PhD in school psychology. That's not typically the practice degree. The practice degree is, is typically um, a master's degree in school psychology. That was a long answer. No, that's a great answer, though. That's what they needed to hear. So, um, And so now imagine I'm a student. Okay. And I'm trying to figure out which of those options, because there are... If There's I'm a doing, lot. Yep, as I was doing the math there, uh, eight, nine, ten options mm -hmm. there that mm -hmm. were, were floated out. Um, how, how do I choose? Like, how do I decide which option might be best for me? Or what are some strategies mm -hmm. students can use to try and decide that? That's a great question. And actually... Thank <laughs> We're just here to make each other feel better. We're not sure we have an audience, but we hope we do. Um, so, uh, one of the things... I think I might start with what I would encourage you not to do. Uh, because what I hear from a lot of students is that they think about their own experience and they think about what they already know. And most of you don't necessarily know what it is to be a clinician in a hospital or to do counseling with adults because you can't do it until you have a graduate degree and a license. Right? But most of you have seen a guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people will say, no, I want to work with kids, I want to be a guidance counselor, I want to be a school psychologist, because the school environment is familiar to you, and kids don't seem scary, because you're older than they are. And the idea of working with people who are older than you are is intimidating. You know what? 
age cures that all too quickly, really all too quickly. Um, but, but, but anyway, I, I just think do some actual research. Don't just rely on, on some of those fears and some of those gut familiarities. Yeah. And I think a lot of students, my experience, again, mm -hmm. my, my bad, um, but, but relying on my own experience for a, for a moment, my experience mm -hmm. is that a lot of people go into graduate school with an idea in mind and they actually change at that point. Mm -hmm. I certainly did. A lot of my did classmates you? did. Um, mm -hmm. I was actually one of those people who wanted to work with kids, right? And I mm -hmm. went to graduate school and then I quickly discovered um, how much I love teaching, but I also mm -hmm. discovered how much I like counseling and working with veterans. And so mm -hmm. it changes over time. And so I think you've got to, I would encourage people to be open to that, mm -hmm. which I, I think is what you're saying. Yes. Be open to, yep. to uh, other possibilities. There's a lot of cool mm -hmm. ways you can do therapy. Um, Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And I was one of those people was one of those people too and I thought I would become a school guidance counselor and um, it was actually working it was my um, undergraduate internship working on a 24-hour uh, crisis hotline that, um, that changed, that changed things for me and, and doing volunteer work in the community and, and right. really feeling that call so anyway there you go um, oh we we're talking about options options yes. how do you decide yeah. well I, I think First, you have to know where you want to work, and I don't. I don't mean that in a sense of you have to know I want to work at Bell and Psych, okay? But I, I think you have to have a sense of I want to work in a community setting versus I want to work in a school setting. Um, I want to potentially work with veterans, uh, mm -hmm. for example. Because if that's the case, then you may end up doing some research, for instance, to look to see. What sorts of mental health professionals do they have on the VA staff? Right. Who do they hire? Uh, because you don't want to go and get a degree that is not going to be marketable for the right. setting that you want to work in. The other thing is um, to do some research on how much education you actually need and to think about how much you want. So you can practice with a master's degree. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go on and get a PhD. Now, I'm not trying to talk people out of going on for a doctorate, but I also don't want people to think that that's, that's the what they have to do or that's their only, that's their only option. Um, the other thing that I think you need to do is actually look at some programs. Look at a graduate, uh, a master's program in counseling. Look at a master's program in social work and a doctoral program. See what's actually involved in those sorts of things. And then also think about, I guess, um, the kinds of questions or information you should be looking for. What I often tell students in my counseling class is that you're going to look at a graduate program for a master's in counseling and it's going to be more appealing to you because it's going to look more familiar and the curriculum is going to be things like alcohol and drug counseling, family counseling, group counseling, counseling theories, counseling techniques. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at a master's program in social work with a clinical emphasis, which is what you would be wanting to do if you're going to um, become a therapist that way, you're going to see classes on public policy. You're going to see classes that look less familiar and that, at least looking at them, are going to feel less like psych classes, mm -hmm. right? the things that you have come to like and you know all those sorts right. of things. On the other hand, the work that you are going to end up doing in the end, you're going to be a therapist. Right? And one of the things that actually I have my advisees and my counseling class students do sometimes is to pull out the phone book. They still make them. They still print them. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to pull out the phone book, you can kind of do it through yellowpages.com, but not. it's not the same. Look up counselors. Look to see the letters after their names. It will give you a sense of how how many people are employed with these different sorts of degrees. Um, it will also give you a sense, if you do that locally, for example, you'll see a lot of people who have the letters LMFT, which stands for Licensed Mental or Marriage and Family Therapist. People who have that LMFT uh, letter after their name, most of them also have MSW okay. first. Right. And so there are folks who got a master's in social work and maybe did a concentration in marriage and family therapy or did the marriage and family therapy after mm -hmm. social work. Right. Marketability is something you have to think about. Job market is something that, that you also need to think about.
I'm going on a tangent. Bring me back That's in, right. Dr. Martin. That's all right. So I actually I had a third question, but we've more or less answered as we've gone. Okay. And that question is, what are some of the early steps? But I think I can answer it, and it's do your, re- do your homework, mm-hmm. right? Do okay. your research. Um, there are lots of different options out there. Okay. Um, we've, we've summed up some of those. Um, you've got some resources that you want to point to, websites, I uh, do, things like that. I um, do. On my own website, I have a careers and counseling page. It will, do be, a little, it, it will be linked there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can take a look at that. Um, if I get really creative and think of some other resources, I may, I may provide them. Um, but that one for sure will, will mm-hmm. be there. And, uh, yeah. you know, talk to your advisor. Mm-hmm. So, yep, I would say, though, I mean, truly, I mean, absolutely talk to your advisor, but one of the things I'd encourage you to do right away is carve out some time and say, I'm going to do some research on some of the different options. I'm yes. going to explore some of these different possibilities um, and and uh, dig things out. And then if you have further mm-hmm. questions, definitely come talk to us. Um, we can help you answer those. So. I would also encourage you, by the way, if you're planning to take the counseling and psychotherapy class, which you should be if you're thinking of right. becoming a therapist, take that earlier rather than later because yep. one of the things that we cover early in the semester in that course are the different types of helping professions, how they're different, how much education is involved. They have readings related to those. So you will get some of that information there. If you put that off until your senior year, right. it's not going to be as helpful. Right. So, very good. <laughs> Well, this was awesome. Thank you very much. We got a couple of these coming at you over the course of the mm-hmm. semester. So, Absolutely. you have been watching Psych for Careers. Thank you very much, Dr. Vespia. Thank you very much for checking in. And if you've got questions, uh, let us know. You can email us, you can mm-hmm. stop by, you can tweet them at us, whatever it takes. So, thank you. Have a good one.